Welcome back to Midday Kentucky, everyone. Well, there's a rare polio-like illness that continues to spread across the US. And according to Time magazine, Amber, the numbers of people catching it are increasing. Here to help us find out what's going down is Dr. Jeremy Stitch from Access Medical. How are you, my friend? Doing great. Thanks for having me back. So glad to see you here. And I wanted to get straight to it. What is the technical term for what we know as this polio-like virus? So the technical term is actually called acute flaccid myelitis. We'll call it AFM, okay. acute flaccid myelitis. What is it? So acute flaccid myelitis is actually like the constellation of all these symptoms that includes paralysis and severe weakness. Mm. So the theory is this, excuse me, this virus um, causes the body to react or causes direct damage to the nerves and some of the people who get it will actually just wake up paralyzed. Ooh. It's a scary wow. thought. That's very scary. And you know, it's similar to polio, like you said, which is almost eradicated throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So it's scary that something like this is coming back. We're doing tons of news stories on it. Not to scare people, but how common is it? It's, fortunately, it's not common. That's the good news. It's a silver lining. So statistically, less than one in a million chance of contracting it. Now, the bad news is, the people who get it are kids, mm. typically yeah. average age four. And I, I can understand why people are worried about this. I've got five kids and I uh, You have five? I do. You've been yeah. a busy man. Yeah. My wife's a saint. <laughs> so Obviously. To record that, everybody. <laughs> Play that again on Valentine's Day. So are you sure you don't want another kid? <laughs> <laughs> <That one. laughs> so, you know, I woke up early this morning. I was playing with my toddler and I was going over the notes on this late last night, and it just struck me, you know, what would you do as a parent if you woke up and you go to get your kid out of bed and they can't get out of bed? Or, or the other alternative is they're out running and they fall doing something that they used to be able to do mm -hmm. yesterday without any trouble. Okay, well you just said that. What do you do when you wake up in the morning and you go in to see your new baby or your child? What are the symptoms? What should parents be looking out for? Let's remember, the good news is it's rare, so yeah. we, we don't but see But there's about 76 or 80, how many people? About 76 right now, they're investigating more Across cases. America, of everyone. That's 2018. Mm. Now, in, this is a biennial thing. So they first actually started finding it in 2012. There were a handful of cases, about 26, I think, is a, the official number. Um, we're up to a total of 4,000, excuse me, 400. And it seems to hit every two years, mm -hmm. and that's why this this virus seems to spread under the right conditions and that's why these two things are really linked. The specific enterovirus that's implicated is called D68. There's another one that's common in um, Asia too and that's another one we're looking into but we don't really know yet. A and what it causes, and this is a little scary too, is it causes a cold and it takes a week to develop the weakness and the paralysis. So you don't get a lot of warning. Okay. But with this virus, it usually does start with a cold. Mm -hmm. So that's something to kind of look for. It's something to look for, but you know, when you think about it, this hits young kids. So your average four-year-old. It's a cold every other day. Every yeah, day. they're going to get six to yeah. ten a year. All so right. well, it's a lot. This is what we need to know, because are there any treatments or vaccines exist out there to help with this or pre-existing vaccines what no not right now so the first goal in creating a vaccine is you gotta you've got to definitively identify the source and we're still debating over what is okay. the source mm -hmm. and what even causes it so that very thing that makes it rare um, it, it also makes it hard because you're looking for something that caused symptoms a week ago yeah and then caused a new set of symptoms a week later when you're testing for it it may not even be there Mm. That's what makes it so tough. All right. Well, look, we, we appreciate you coming and we want you to come back when we ever have medical questions, yes. my friend. There's Dr. Jeremy Stitch's email and information up on your screen now. Access Med. Appreciate you, my friend. Thanks for having Alrighty, me. All righty. Back after this short break, everyone.